as we have as we shared a couple weeks ago that starting over can be a difficult task amen mm -hmm. no one really wants to start over oftentimes when we start over it's because someone or something has forced our hand amen, amen. whether it be the loss of a job anybody ever lost a job whether it been um, a divorce, yeah. whether it's been a breakup in a relationship, there's always something, there's always an entity that has caused us to have to start over. Because if anybody is like me, I like to leave stuff well alone. If it's already cool, leave it alone. I don't like change. Anybody in here with me? Do you Amen. like change? I like, if things have been set a certain way, I like them to Stay like that. I don't like turbulence. I don't like waves to be moved. I don't like nobody to <coughs> force my hand, if you will. So as we've been in the series starting over, we recognize that we have looked at three individuals. We have in the book of Ruth, which can, again, we're in, we're in Ruth chapter 1, and now we're picking up, we're going to be picking up in verse 8. But if I might backtrack a little bit, we have three women here who have something in common. Their commonality is death. They have been, they have suffered death. They have suffered, the, all three of them have suffered the death of a husband. And one individual by the name of Naomi, who is the older of these three individuals, she has suffered death of her children, her sons as well. So she's not only just suffered the death of her husband, she's also, also lost her two sons, her only two sons. So here we have three women, Naomi, Ruth, and Orpah. After they have suffered the loss, they're now in this land, this, this land called Moab, which Orpah and Ruth, they're natives of it, but, but Naomi is a foreigner there. She's only been living in Moab for about 10 years. So after the loss, after Naomi lost her husband and then she lost her two sons, which her two sons was married to the two, uh, two women, Ruth and Orpah. So here they are having to start over, if you will, because they've suffered a loss. How many in here have suffered a loss where it has caused you to have to start over? Amen. 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 Yes. Okay. Amen. So here we are. Their hands have been forced. Three women, husbandless, without a covering, vulnerable, open to all kinds of attack. Because the duty of their husband was to cover them, to protect them. Yes, yes. And in Naomi's case, when her husband died, it, that responsibility fell to her sons. Uh -huh. So here we have now, she has nothing, no covering. And the nothing. other two ladies, Ruth and Orpah, they never had a chance to have children. They lost their husband before they had children, so they don't have anybody to protect them. They're kind of just out there on their own. Uh -huh. So here they are in Moab. Moab, a place of paganism, mm -hmm. a place where they worship other gods, mm -hmm. a place where one of the uh, parts of worshiping was to sacrifice their children mm -hmm. to their God that they were, their, the God that they were serving, Amen. the God that they were worshiping. Amen. And so here we have them in a place called Moab. Moab kind of reminds us of the world, if you will. A place where all kinds of things are going on, yeah. all kind of ungodly, yeah. all kinds of wickedness is Amen. going on. Amen. So here we have these three women who have suffered a loss, and now their hands have been forced, and now they must start over. Amen. So as we talked about a couple weeks ago, that Naomi heard that the Lord was blessing um, the, his people in Bethlehem, where she is from where she left because her husband took her to how she got to Moab. Her husband took her to Moab because Bethlehem was in a famine. Yes. And as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, the Bible doesn't tell us why there was a famine, but throughout biblical history, sometimes famine represented some type of disobedience. Uh -huh. But Naomi's husband took her and, her and their two sons to Moab and to get away from the famine. And as we discussed a couple of weeks ago, sometimes when we are in a famine, instead of running from that famine, because the place that they were in was the place that God promised them. That was a place of promise. Yes. But because a famine arose, they jetted. Uh -huh. And oftentimes when we're in a famine, because perhaps because of some disobedience or perhaps disobedience of someone else, yes. 
we find ourselves running instead of staying and riding it out. That's right. Because yeah. sometimes we have to face a consequence. Right. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. that consequence comes with lack. It yes. comes when you're dealing with a famine, there's some lack there. Yes. yes. Okay? So are you with me this morning? That's right. That's right. So That's here right. we have these three women who are forced to start over. So Naomi had heard the, from the place that had formerly suffered a famine, now she's hearing that God is blessing his people. So now she's wanting to return. And part of returning, her two daughter-in-laws want to go along with her. Uh -huh. But as we look at, at, we look at verse 8, where we pick up at verse 8, it says that Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your father's house, your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. Before that, if we step back to verse, verse 7, we will find that in verse 7, they all left together, right? Amen. But then when we get to verse 8, Naomi kind of flipped the script on them a little bit. She's mm -hmm. telling them to go back. Mm -hmm. So as we've been in this series starting over, today we are going to talk about how to move forward. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, God, for another opportunity to come into your presence to hear your word. Lord, I have studied, God. But I recognize, Lord, that I still need your preaching power. Lord, I ask that you anoint me afresh as 